against the tiny one slash Bushi. And I had a quiet moment, so I decided that I'm going to um, do a video on <clears throat> chronic illnesses, chronic fatigue, and going out on an outing. Um, keep in mind, I'm just going by my own personal experiences. Uh, if you have chronic illnesses or chronic fatigue, yours may differ from mine, but this is just what I had to deal with. Also, I've noticed that um, I have a problem focusing on the camera right there, and I tend to focus on the monitor right here because it's a bit of a distraction. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, also, I have a problem with keeping eye contact with people. Um, it's part of stuff that happened when I was growing up, and so I'm sorry about that if my gaze tends to wander. I try to come back to it as best as possible, but anyways, on to the video. So, uh, I mentioned on Saturday I went out with a friend, uh, we went to see a movie, we enjoyed it, and then we went to go, um, get a late lunch. And then afterwards, we went ahead and um, <clears throat> he brought me home. And then I was like, when I'm out and about and going, going, I don't feel exhausted. But then the minute I'm home, it kind of just hits me. Maybe not right away, but once I get into my, what I call my comfy clothes, because Sometimes when I'm having bad pain days, I can't wear stuff like jeans or, you know, something with rough fabric. I have to have, like, something soft, like uh, cotton t-shirt material, sweats, uh, <clears throat> pajama bottoms, that sort of stuff. Uh, I try to, like, save up my pain days or save up my energy levels for why I'm going to go out so that I can wear jeans and be a somewhat, um, I don't know, I guess normal looking. But then when I get home, I get into the pajama pants or the sweats or something that's comfortable and soft and that's not going to irritate me, irritate my uh, pain levels or nothing. Well, Pain levels are going to be there anyway, but it helps to use stuff for me. But anyways, uh, I noticed that the moment that I came home, I changed, and then I felt sleepy. I was tired. I was in my home base, and I didn't have to keep up appearances. I didn't have to keep up energy levels, anything like that. Um, I think I went on Facebook for a little while, went through my Facebook feed, went through my Twitter, uh, yeah, my Twitter feed. And then I had to lay down, and so I went and I laid down with my cat, and we napped. I got up, was able to do a few more things with my computer, and I had to nap again. I think I napped until like three times, uh, just Saturday night. And then um, I got up pretty late, I think it was about five in the morning, I went through Facebook again, because I missed my normal I also have a problem going to sleep, and from what I've been watching from another YouTuber, it could be a sign of narcolepsy, and just because, um, nar you heard the term narcolepsy and you think, oh, you can fall asleep anyway, that's not necessarily true, uh, you can also have trouble going to sleep when you want to, and I don't know if it's actual narcolepsy that I have, or because of my pain issues, so it's something to bring up with my doctor the next time I have a visit with her. So, just another, um, I, I know not all of my invisible disabilities are taken into account. I don't have all of them down right now. I know there's more that I have. So, it's a slow journey trying to get sorted out exactly what I have wrong with me and what's not wrong with me and sometimes it's hit or miss, sometimes I have to go get 
more than one diagnosis just to make sure that the initial diagnosis is the correct one. It's, it's a process when you're chronically ill, um, especially with invisible disabilities, because it's like you can look physically fine on the outside and then inside you're just a mess. And it's not a fault of your own, it's just how genetics works, you know, whatever. So, um, this morning, I well, Sunday morning, I wake up and I'm just so exhausted, so tired. And so I didn't have anything to do, so I've been resting all day, especially since I have another outing to go to on Wednesday. Um, so yeah, I've just been resting, resting. Uh, my cat has been so sweet, and she's rested with me most of the day. Uh, she let me curl up with her, and uh, for some reason, she's able to calm me down to the point where I can actually, my body actually calms down and gets some adequate rest. And so, excuse me, I was able to do that. Um, it just took me a while. Yeah, I'm still suffering from sleepiness. Um, just from the out, outing for several hours yesterday. And it's just a daily thing. It's nothing that I did. It's nothing that my friend did. It's just what I have to deal with on a daily basis. But anyways, um, I'm grateful. And I also lose train of thought. Sorry, Griffin. Uh, I am grateful to have my cat that she was able to help me get some sleep. So that I'm able to be up and functioning and do this video. And it's probably like wild and all over the place, but yeah. Being chronically ill takes a lot of resting, either before an event, during, if you're able to. Like, if you're, if I'm at one of my conventions, I'm able to take rests. Like, um, I can go in for a panel, and then I can rest for like 45 minutes, an hour, or sometimes I can be in one of the two-hour panels and get a good rest. And I can still be entertained by whatever is, you know, in front of me up on the stage. And then there's, um, or I can rest in my hotel room, whatever. And then there's also resting after the events uh, when you can actually relax and you don't have to worry about anything. You just focus on yourself. Um, Like, and like I said, it varies from person to person. Some people need more rest. Some people need less rest. And some people can go for a couple days and be good. Uh, but that's just how crack fatigue goes. I know mine isn't as bad as other people's, and I'm grateful for that. But I also know that there are other people who have crack fatigue uh, who have other chronic illnesses who do better than I do. So it's just, you know, everybody is going to be at a certain place. And a lot of people are mainly going to be in the middle. You know, it's going to be people worse than you, people better than you when it comes to illnesses. And it's not, um, it's not a race. It's not a competition. Um, everybody just... We're all ill, you know, those of us that are in this little area, spectrum of chronic illness, and we just have to do the best we can day by day, moment by moment, and, you know, we have good moments, we have bad moments, and we just need to focus on the positive as much as possible, um, even if it's something as low as, oh, I got to wake up in the morning, oh, I got to... If you have a cat, I got to cuddle my cat or my dog or whatever. If you have a pet, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know. If you, like I said, I'm sorry, this is all over the place. Uh, it, I'm still tired, so it's like my concentration is all over the place. If you have any questions about chronic fatigue, chronic illnesses, invisible disabilities, uh, anything that pertains to myself, uh, go ahead and ask it in the comments below. 
either on YouTube or my Facebook page. Um, I would like to do another, uh, probably, possibly a Facebook Live and answer anyone's questions about chronic fatigue, chronic illnesses, and, you know, how I deal with that on a daily basis. I think that would be a good video to do that I can post up on this channel. But anyways, I think that's it for now. Um, and unfortunately, another thing I want to add, sometimes with chronic fatigue comes uh, pain, especially if it's like, right now it's still warm. So I'm doing okay pain-wise, but then, um, once it starts to get cooler or colder, pain often comes with the chronic fatigue. And the, um, after doing an event, sometimes it's the pain from uh, the cold which knocks you down. And then it's like, unfortunately, there's a lot of painkillers I can't take because of my heart issues and so it's like I know for sure I'm okay with Tylenol and I'm okay with Advil I don't take them often I take them you know I try and stick out the pain as much as possible so I don't have as much of, of those type of chemicals in my body to mess me up in other ways I don't need to be messed up in um but like I can't take I used to take um was it uh course I don't remember why I need to uh Ritalin uh not Ritalin but <laughs> not Ritalin <laughs> I used to take Vicodin um years and years ago but then um my body started to reject the Vicodin like I would take it and then 20 minutes later I would get violently ill and that's not going to help my body at all if it's rejecting that and not even letting the medicine be able to take effect on me so it was just easier on my body, my stomach, my esophagus to just go back and do Tylenol and Advil. And I usually mo I usually take just like one once every single time. Sometimes I'll wait it like an hour or two and then take another one. But with my size and my weight, it's just safer to take like the child dosage just, you know, because I don't want a bad side effect to compound what I'm additionally feeling so that's a little bit of additional information that I almost forgot thankfully I remembered at the end anyways uh thank y'all for watching stay safe stay happy and I'll talk to y'all later bye I'm sorry if I look so tired still um usually oh the other thing is it usually takes me like a couple days to recover from an outing depending on how much rest I'm able to get so it's probably like maybe two three days sometimes it takes a bit longer like when I go to conventions that usually takes about four or five days uh, and then of course if I get sick then forget it that usually takes like a couple weeks but anyway, so yeah that's all for now talk to y'all later bye <laughs>